This is the G Podcast with your host, Tommy B. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to episode 213 of This is the G Podcast. Yes, yes. I'm Tommy B, and each week we do news, politics, pop culture, that piping hot tea from the one and only Tanya B. Political analyst Harold Michael Harvey joins us this week to add commentary to the DA Fonnie Willis hearing with all the fireworks. Woo, what a hearing, what a hearing in Fulton County. And also the over $350 million Trump judgment in New York. We'll talk about it. Vi and Tlaib are here, the Newsmaker crew. They are in the building. First, let's get into news with Syracuse Mike. Assemble! It's time for the Week in News with Syracuse Mike. There will be increased security at Joel Osteen's church and other churches in the Houston area after a shooting Sunday left a child and a man wounded. Osteen spoke to the media. We're going to stay strong. We're going to continue to, to move forward. And There are forces of evil, but the, the forces that are for us, the forces of God are stronger than that. So we're going to keep going strong and just... Uh, you know, doing what God's called us to do, lift people up and give hope to the world. The female suspect was shot and killed by police. One person is dead, and as many as 22 people were shot Wednesday afternoon, right after the Kansas City Chiefs parade for their Super Bowl win. A Kansas City radio station has identified the person killed as one of their DJs, Lisa Lopez Galvan. The shooting in the city's Union Station. As many as 11 children were among those hurt. All are expected to survive. Kansas City Police Chief Stacy Graves. Officers responded to the area, took two people into custody, and also immediately rendered life-sustaining aid to those victims. We now know that three armed people were taken into custody. The FBI and ATF are investigating. Mayor Quentin Lucas. We never would have thought that we, along with Chiefs players, along with fans, hundreds of thousands of people, would be forced to run for our safety. No one from the Chiefs organization was hurt. Police are blaming the shooting on a few bad actors, and no terrorism is suspected. It was a tense hearing in Atlanta to determine if Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis should be removed from the election interference case against former President Trump and several others. This is the truth, Judge. And this and is it, it is a lie. It is, it is a lie. Ms. Willis, Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. This hearing concerns Willis's relationship with Nathan Wade, one of the prosecutors in the case. Trump's co-defendant, Michael Roman, alleges that a secret personal relationship between the Fulton DA and Wade amounted to a conflict of interest and warranted their disqualification. Roman's lawyer maintains that Willis benefited financially from the relationship. When she and Wade took personal trips together, she said, She tells me how much it is. And I give him the money back. Willis said the relationship ended before the grand jury handed up the indictment against Trump and his co-defendants. A New York judge who found them guilty of intentionally committing financial fraud over the course of a decade has ordered Donald Trump and his company to pay over $350 million in damages. The judge barred the former president and two other executives from serving as officers or directors of any corporation or entity in New York for three years. His sons Eric and Donald Jr. were banned for two years. This is the case brought by New York Attorney General Letitia James. Donald Trump engaged in deceptive business practices and tremendous fraud. Donald Trump falsely, knowingly, inflated his net worth by billions of dollars. Donald Trump says he will appeal. We'll be successful, I think, because frankly, if we're not successful, New York State is gone. People are moving out of New York State. And because of this, they're going to move out at a much faster rate. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis did not testify as planned Friday. It would have been her second day on the stand. A defiant Willis took the stand Thursday in a hearing to determine if she should be removed from the election interference case against former President Trump and several allies. Earlier, she made her feelings about the defense raising the issue quite clear. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. This hearing concerns Willis's relationship with Nathan Wade, one of the prosecutors in the case. Trump's co-defendant, Michael Roman, alleges that a secret personal relationship relationship between the Fulton DA and Wade amounted to a conflict of interest and warranted their disqualification. Roman's lawyer maintains that Willis benefited financially from the relationship. When she and Wade took personal trips together, she said, She tells me how much it is, and I give him the money back. Willis said the relationship ended before the grand jury handed up the indictment against Trump and his co-defendants. 
A ruling from the judge to decide if Willis can continue to lead her election interference case could take a few days or possibly a few weeks. Man, thanks, Mike, for the headlines. Another crazy, busy week. And just appreciate you staying on top of it, man. The Newsmaker crew is here. And I'm just going to go around the round table. They'll introduce themselves when they talk. But uh, what's up? Uh, Harold Michael Harvey, of course. Uh, HaroldMichaelHarvey.com. Talib Shabazz is in the building, of course. And and by they're all here, y'all. Let me go ahead and just give them the general applause. There we go. Big week this week. And, and I just want to start. And I want to start with Harold Michael Harvey. Mr. Harvey, thank you so much for coming in. Yes, sir. Um, it was uh, courtroom drama this week um, on, on several fronts. Uh, the first one is Fonnie Willis. And it was big news. Big news, not only, you know, we're near Fulton County, you're in Fulton County. Um, and um, it was big news. Big news here, big news across the country, big news across the world. Uh, how do you think she fared? How do you think Fonnie Willis fared in all this? I, I think she's going to come out smelling like a rose. Uh, you know, going into it, it, it seems seems as if this is a very tawdry affair. But you know, there's two things about this this motion that was filed by uh, criminal defendant Roman uh, in in the um, uh, racketeering trial that he's associated with Donald Trump, and that is number one, uh, the motion is filed based upon rumors and innuendos, no evidence. And, you know, so the first thing that strikes me is, is that the legal system has come to the point where everybody else is in this age of social media, where um, rumors and innuendos and uh, unverified facts can end up in a court of law and someone has to come in and stand uh, uh, and prove uh, that those things are not true. And the second thing is, I, I don't see how the court really based upon rumors and in the endos, uh, decided to go forward with a hearing in the matter. But he did, and there we are. And uh, it was a very explosive um, hearing on Thursday when Fonnie Willis, who had filed a motion to squash the hearing, that means that um, the subpoena that was issued to her to come in and testify at this hearing, she wanted the court to say she did, did not have to do that. Well, um, after um, several witnesses testified, uh, and and as the defense attorneys was arguing that Miss Fannie Willis ought to come in here and tell us whether or not she uh, had an improper relationship or improper use of um, of uh, taxpayers' funds, uh, Fannie Willis stormed into the court and said, "I'm ready to go," and she took the stand. She was very defined and very right off the bat. She told uh, Becky, uh, attorney, um, whatever her name is, I call her Becky. Becky's Becky. good. Yeah. <laughs> she told Becky <laughs> that she held up the pleadings and said, these are lies. She called Becky a lie right off the bat, and she never relented, uh, and she stayed on the attack. Uh, and one one thing that I really like in her testimony um is that at one point in time, they were trying to make her put down um, Nathan Wade. And her response, she didn't answer the question. She simply said, I am not going to emasculate a black man. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, this what this hearing did, it put black culture front and center. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think white Americans and other Americans got an opportunity. They think they know us, but they don't because they don't really try to to get to understand us and our culture because they're always uh, um, measuring us based upon their culture. But we do have a culture. And, and, and you know what? I'm going to stop you there, especially okay. on Friday when they were asked about hiding the money, you know, and the dad said, I don't mean to be racist, but it's a black thing. You know, we we all, we've been putting money in the mattress, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> for Our centuries great grandparents did it yes I, you, you yeah. know I, I, I saw my grandparents doing when i was a kid seven eight years old growing up yeah. uh, you know and and so that's been in our culture for a long time and and um 
and, and we generally pay by cash. You know, some of us are coming to the 21st century and, you know, we'll we do things uh, with cars. But, uh, you know, black people generally carry cash because you never know when somebody's going to go monkey to monkey on you and not accept your, your credit. And so, um, you know, you, I, you know, my wife always makes sure when I'm getting ready to leave the house, you got any cash on you. Make sure you take some cash with you just in case you, you, you run into something that you can't handle. Um, uh, and and I was taught that in the home growing up to always have cash on you. And and apparently, Bonnie Willie's father raised her the same way. And so, the the criminal defendants who filed this motion are befuddled because there is no uh, paper trail for them to actually bring in the court to document it. So the issue here, I'm just kind of rolling. Can I can I just can I just free? Yeah, but I, I do want to I do want to go to Vine and to lead. But go ahead and wrap with this, and we're gonna come back to you. But go All ahead. Right, I was I was about to get on another tangent. No, let's go ahead and do this then. At this point, Vi, what do you think about what what uh, Harold Michael Harvey just said? If anybody had any doubt about her, she really killed it. She showed how confident she is that she is not scared, and she really showed why Trump was coming to because. They coming at her because they're scared of her. They are scared because she is not scared of them. And they realize that she is coming at them by the law. And she's not backing yeah. down. And what by her testifying, I think they really said, wow, we we in trouble. If yeah. she stays in this case, we in trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to you, Talib. Talib, you said a couple of things via text. <laughs> 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 and, and you know what? I agree, because we're in the South. You, with some yeah, of these southern yeah, lawyers, listen. man, they think you listen. know this is like uh, what is it, to kill a mockingbird. No, brother, man, we bro. out of that. I'm telling <laughs> this you, ain't Atticus you, Finch. Listen, that, <laughs> it felt like I was watching The Color Purple <laughs> <laughs> when that uh, when that that scene that um, uh, Oprah Winfrey, you know, gets gets beat up by all the white dudes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's my man's name? Scott Salmon, Scott Salmon, something, something or other, Simon, mm -hmm. whatever that uh, uh, Trump's attorney, you know, first of all, how many attorneys do you all have? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It felt like there were like 24 people talking about, you know, at, at trying to ask the same question over and over again. How many, how many attorneys are there? Uh, I think there are three defendants remaining. And, okay. and there are there are actually six attorneys that some of them may have had someone else to uh, help them. Man, um, it uh, felt like there was 40. <laughs> as, it might have been as, 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 as the judge was working his way through them trying to get their opinions. You know, I'm telling you, like, the, text, the, the text message was, I really felt like I, run, I wanted to jump through the television set. You know what I mean? And just start mm -hmm. knocking some people in their head. You know, Miss Merchant, you know, uh, you know, uh, come on. You know, if, yeah, exactly. That's who, you know, yeah, Becky. She was, I mean, look, I mean, just the the the, the whole, I, I, I understand. I've been in the courtroom before, mm -hmm. you know, I've been on the adversary of the, 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 the short side of the adversarial uh, prosecutor. You know the you know trying to get to the heart of things and you know looking at me and trying to you know word things certain ways and use the word hoard h o r d e to refer to money. Who does yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Who does that? You know. So I, I, I you know to to me, um, yeah. Okay. I, all I can say is uh, there's a rapper named Plies. I don't know if you know about him, uh, H yeah. but. There's a the, there's a rapper named Plies P L I E S and I would encourage you to just see Plies's response to uh, Fanny <laughs> Fanny Willis because he was falling in love. He's like I, Fanny 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 Willie. <laughs> right. He's like that is funny. He's great, right, it's hilarious. But he's like, yo, I've never yeah. fallen in love with a woman on the stand before. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and you know so so let's let's look at this in a couple of different ways and I'm gonna try and keep it real brief. We've already discussed our feelings on 
how she could have how, how she could have allowed something like this to happen knowing that she was about to get all you know every every green laser from from snipers possible you know in going up against this case you mm-hmm. know um I'm not here to talk about, you know, matters of the heart and how after we spend all this time together, we, you know, we start feeling each other a little bit or whatever the case might be. Um, I don't think there's anything sinister going on there. So I'm not going to, that's, and I've already addressed it. So that's as far as I'm going to leave that with what we know to be the case. um, You know, I know how much people make from contracts with the city, especially when it comes to this legal stuff, you know, sister Gigi Price, you know, um, she, you know, as a court reporter, you know, handling all these humongous cases, you know, yeah, she was, she was clocking major money because that's what this takes in order to make a case happen, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And if this guy had a contract for $750,000, believe that he probably worked about a million and a half to, worth of hours you know what i mean for Mm -hmm. for the case because five other people said they didn't want it and i don't you know and i'm not including including governor and that's exactly and so so to so for for him to be on the stand and say man i ain't want no no parts of that bro yeah go ahead and sum it up i'm gonna let you sum it up there and and i've got one thing i'm gonna go back to you uh hma chair michael harvey uh, one, one of the other things, man, when you look at the Trump and I call it the Trump universe, OK, how it treats women, OK, and how women are submissive in terms of the overall plan. OK, they don't know how to handle a black woman who's independent like Fonnie. OK, because most of the women who are in their camp are merely following orders, you know, even when it's in there. I mean, and, and you and I have had this conversation Harold Michael Harvey about when it, when it, even when it's in, it's against their interest. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, we talk about just going back in history to slavery when you had the slave master and and the woman, the, the, the white female would always submit to her husband, no matter how egregious the behavior was to the slave population. So it's amazing because they just don't know how to handle her. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's even going to the next thing we're going to talk about, Latish James, up in New York. Mm-hmm. Go ahead on that. <laughs> Over three hundred million dollars. I'm going to let you go ahead and and do a quick summary on it, Harold Michael Harvey. That was and this happened again this week as we take. Um, I don't think anyone was surprised. I wasn't surprised by the verdict. Were mm-hmm. you surprised, Harold Michael Harvey? No, not as the case that unfolded. Uh, I wasn't, you know, clearly the evidence established, you know, that he had uh, inflated his properties in order to, um, um, you know, garner loans on the, on those properties and that his um, financial wealth was built upon lies that he had told to financial institutions in order to borrow money for them. And he's still um, doing it. <laughs> you know, so, so, so today... As of yesterday, uh, Donald J. Trump is a criminal. Fr- well, that wasn't a criminal case. He's a fraud, a financial fraudster. He has he has, it has been declared that he has defrauded financial institutions in New York. And when you defraud financial institutions in New York, it's the largest financial uh, center in the world. So there goes the world. If if that market crashes because you've got people coming in fraudulently obtaining loans from them, then, you know, economies, um, financial institutions throughout the world will begin to fall. So it's a very important and significant case. The amount of money that the court uh, says that that he has to uh, uh, give back uh, to the government is tremendous. I think, what, $355 million dollars um, you, you know, he's going to be, I don't know, some uh, pundits say he's going to be hard pressed to come up with that type of money because his wealth never has been in the range in which he has claimed his wealth to be. You mm-hmm. know, so um, Letitia James um, was, um, she she um, withstood the threats 
the taunts, the uh, ugly uh, language from Trump. Her family was doxxed. That's right. In terms of, you know, all their personal information being put out in the public. Uh, yeah. and, and essentially, that's what he, they've done with this hearing on Fonnie Willis. We know more about Fonnie Willis than any of us on um, listening to this podcast have any business knowing. Yep. Right. Period. You, you know, um, I wish I didn't know. I, 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 I love her still, because even though I know these things, you know, I have I don't lose any respect for, in fact, I gain respect by knowing, but I have no business knowing. And, and that is what happens in Trump world. When you go against him, he has done it <laughs> for decades. He has ruined people for decades who uh, had a willingness to stand up to him. But there's one thing he has never had to confront, and that is a strong black woman. And I'm telling you, I've been married to one for 43 years. <laughs> yeah. Strong black women do not play. Yeah. You know, um, they they'll don't get forget. after you. <laughs> huh? And they don't forget nothing. And they don't forget, yeah. And, and you know, so... Um, listening to funny on Friday I said what my grandmama would see in a situation like this Donald Trump just tore his pants so he, he is anger he, so he, he as, as I like to always say he unleashed the Kraken he did. it's 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 just I mean they better they better pray it works in their favor because if it doesn't it I mean she going out I'm a, yeah I'm going to you to leave and then uh, first and then you by this time Real quick, uh, just thoughts on on what happened in New York, man. Fair? More than fair. Come on. I mean, <laughs> look, man. <laughs> I'm just asking. I said, as, a, as, a, as a former New Yorker, I've been tired of Donald Trump for a long time. <laughs> and didn't get the fascination of why everybody wanted to put this guy in their TV shows and movies. I thought he was whack. Uh, he's been wet. And that rap, and the rap been, songs. Right. But see, I can understand, you know, look, I can understand why he's there, but at the same yeah. time, it's like, come on, y'all. Yeah. You know, yeah. this guy, is a, he's been a brand since then. And yeah. that's, and and it's it's all been inflated. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's finally realize who this clown is and leave him alone. Mm -hmm. So true. Go to you, Vi. No, he got what he got. I don't think, mm -hmm. I don't think they're really going to get that money out of him because I don't think he have it. Oh, he's going to peel it to death. Oh, yeah. No, well, that's he, my point. He's going to peel it to he, death. So He, I mean, he has buildings. But, but by he has buildings, and mm -hmm. the government can actually attach those those buildings and, labor and force a sale and collect the money that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I was hearing, I was hearing, Mike, I was, I was hearing uh, Vod and that, uh, you know, for Michael Cohen. Because Michael Cohen, if you know, is getting ready for the Stormy Daniels case in New York too. So that's, yeah, that's next. Gonna a, he's going to lose that one too. But yeah, uh, so, <laughs> but, but my point is, <laughs> Cohen, Cohen is saying it's it's all about right now for him. Uh, it's going to be about liquidating assets. But the other thing that, mm -hmm. and and, I, and I'll throw it back to you, Vi. The other thing that concerns should concern Republican voters, GOP is the money that should be used promoting the campaign in the general election is being used for his legal battle. Does it, I mean, you get what I'm saying. I love uh, it. Oh, yeah. So, so you don't, you're not going to see much, I, I don't think, in the way or on the level of what Biden's going to do in the general election because most of Trump's money is going toward legal, the Correct. legal battle. Mm -hmm. Anything, any last thing on this? Well, I... We knew he was going to lose. We just didn't know how much they're going to get. Because, like I said, the judge already made the decision that he was guilty. He was just yeah, yeah. airing the, the, the cake to see how much money they're going to charge him for. So, my mm -hmm. thing is, did it really change anything? You know, I think, I think, Vi, let me, let me say, I think it adds up. You got to keep in mind, I mean, when, when you look at the, uh, the I sexual assault say. case, it's all adding up. And again, it, it goes. But, is it, it really? But, but let me say, yeah, let me say this though, Vi. It goes toward pulling money away from what should be used on their strategy in the general election. These primaries really don't matter. The Republican primary, they already know, but he's got to spend, he's going to have to spend money against Biden. Got a ton of money. He got a war it, chest. I hear what you're saying. I'm saying, does it, yeah. is it really changing the people mad about him? But see, understand this, Vi. You've got, the MAGA people. 
right. they they're dug in. Yeah. You've got yeah. uh, you've got you've you got the left. They're dug in. Dug in. What really what really matters in 2024? Independent voters. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've got people. Believe it or so not, that's, so that's what we count you, on the independent voters. Mm-hmm. Well, to sway. <laughs> so my point is. You're not going to sway the independent voters if you don't have any money because all your money is going toward legal. Okay. Well, I, I got it. I understand. I just have, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to wait and see on this. Because see, the money, the money, they, Trump doesn't need to spend any money on the MAGA people. No, he don't. And he knows, he knows he doesn't have any, he got a, I mean, he well, got he a chance to show left. his true color to the MAGA people and they still love him. He said, yeah, yeah, gonna, yeah. he said, he said they're going to get a wall. Mm-hmm. They get a wall. Then they, they found that people is actually taking the money for the wall for their own person, person right? and they still want it. So my point yeah. is, yeah, I mean, I've always considered him a crook and fraudulent, but that's me. I want <laughs> people who did, did he change into people's mind by who thought he was God. But you think, Vi, you're from, the, you know, we're like to leave, and I have family from New York. Right. Okay. So we've always talked about why, yeah, why did, lifting this guy up and, and what what cemented it for me was the central park five when he put that ad out was it the new york times yeah, i forgot yeah, which yeah, newspaper yeah, he put yeah. that full page ad out you know he lost me completely so people will ask me says why, why not you why don't you consider him? i said I, I i'll never consider him right you know i i'll, right. I'll never consider him. you know yeah, because he, he, he lost he lost me a long time ago even for people in New York, go back to the the uh, the housing discrimination cases that were against his dad, right? You know, but the Central Park Five situation will always be salty. Yeah. Will always be leave a it left a bad taste in my mouth that I'll never get rid of, and it's hard for me even, you know, with the GOP. Uh, <laughs> When we'll get to it toward the end of the show, mm-hmm. when we have these shootings, people say, well, why can't you consider, Repo-? I can't consider the GOP because shoot these shootings happen. It just reminds me where I shouldn't be. Right. <laughs> because right. they are holding up any forward progress we can have on getting rid of Good. these assault rifles. Okay. So when people ask me, well, you know, why can't, no, I'm not, I can't consider them mm-hmm. because they're on the wrong side of history. I'm gonna go back to you, uh, Harold Michael Harvey, and um, and then I just I want to do a quick. Well, you had something, Tilly. Go ahead. Um, I just think that one of the, the 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 one of the lines that came out of this trial was that you know when they when it was said something to the effect of that the Trump family had a lack of remorse that borders on pathological. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. Yep. You know, to hey, know. Say, it, say, it, say it loud for the people in the back, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, of remorse that borders on pathological, which means that I don't care. You know, if, if nothing says that I don't really, it's all about me and mine, there's nothing more than that. Like, yeah. why would you want that as the type of person that's leading your country? You don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what that, I'm gonna go back to you. Yeah, go, I'm gonna go back to you, Harold Michael Harvey, and then uh, Vama I'm gonna start with you on the, the big takeaway for the week. Okay. Okay. Harold Michael Harvey, last last thing on this. Um, New York. Oh, New York. Oh, I. All right. Just overall. Just overall. Just okay. overall. Doesn't matter. What I like to do is uh, sort of parse uh, this motion that was filed against Tony Willis to disqualify her, and so there are two. There are two. The improper relationship is out the window. Because you could have a relationship in that situation, so so there's the issue of whether or not she received some financial benefit as a result of the contract that Nathan Wade had, and so they brought in two witnesses. So key to establishing that on on the side of the defense is when did the relationship start? Um, th- they both said the relationship started uh, just prior to the indictment coming out. But the, the the criminal defendants, they brought in a disgruntled uh, employee right, who right. was a friend of Fonnie Willis uh, that Fonnie met in college when she was in undergraduate school at Howard. And the friend who lived in Maryland went to a school in the DC, another school in that DC uh, Maryland area. 
but they partied together on weekends. And that's how she met her. Hadn't seen her in over 30 years. And about seven or eight years ago, she ran into her in Atlanta. And lo and behold, she becomes district attorney. And she offers the friend a job. The friend was written up several times for poor job performance. And the in, for job performance, uh, according to, uh, you know, the uh, district attorney's office, didn't improve. So Fonnie had to let her go. And the woman hasn't spoken to Fonnie since. This lady testified that she saw a Wade and Willis at a condo that she had um, sublet to Willis when Willis had to leave her home because of the uh, threats that was made on her life. Um, she, she says that uh, she saw them hugging, um, kissing, showing affection to one another in 2019. You know, Willis and Wade said a relationship starts sometimes in 21. Um, and so, but but the district attorney's office was able, in my mind, to uh, discredit this woman's testimony because she had an ax to grind. So yeah. I think I think the judge is going to ultimately determine that her testimony was not credible. The second witness was a law partner, Mr. Bradley, Attorney Bradley, a former law partner of uh, Nathan Wade, and that law partner had to leave the relationship, the business relationship, because there was some allegation that he had um, either sexually assaulted a, a an employee of the firm or attempted to sexually assault a, an employee at the firm at a bar that they had gone to after work hours. Um, and so he has an ax to grind. So the, the two witnesses that that the criminal defendants brought to court to establish that this relationship started before the contract um, started before the indictment mm -hmm. were discredited. Yeah, and, yeah, and they, I, I kind of think that the okay. judge has to not. He can't. I don't see how he can find either one of them as credible witnesses. The the disgruntled employee for for the district attorney's office didn't give any specifics of um, where this hugging and kissing took place. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it, it, some event just said that those type of things happened, and that was her observation of that they were in a relationship prior to um, uh, twenty one. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so 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 I think uh, so so that those are the legal issues that the judge will sort of have to wrestle. Uh, with this coming week after he gets through all the motions that the criminal defendants attorneys um, you know at least the objections that they file for the admission uh, of certain evidence good stuff good stuff and we'll we'll definitely uh, stay on top of it and, and, and follow up with it next week all right y'all final thoughts uh, big takeaways whatever uh, start with you Vi uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, my orange guy he's I don't understand how people can won't this guy can be the president even though he did not serve the country it's like he has no respect for anybody who did serve the country hmm. he thinks when you go deployed that you're a fool if you go over there and fight for your country so if we don't go who goes yeah. he acts like the freedom that he got he was born with it it was fought for and why would you want to make this man the leader of our country? He don't believe in that. He man. believes the country can be win in a boardroom. He really believes that. And he also believes America can stand on their own, that we don't need nobody. So why would you want that man the leader of your country? So he would actually turn his, turn his backs on anybody. So that's yeah. what we want. I mean, everybody should see that. I've said that many times before. Why would you want a president of your country to be selfish? He would throw his wife, his kid under the bus. Or he would use him as a shield to protect himself as long as he come out clean. So no. This man just keeps showing us why he shouldn't be in office. So Yeah, and I and I'm gonna mention this by and, and we're gonna move on to Talib. Uh Nikki Haley, her husband right. was deployed. That's, That's how that away. came up. This yeah, man, and the other thing 
Yeah, the other yeah. thing you mentioned yeah. was uh, the uh, NATO. That the, might be uh, a takeaway. Nikki Haley's husband is overseas serving his country. Mm-hmm. And he wants to say, I don't know what he said, but clearly it was not polite. It was uncalled no. for. And no yeah. one is chastising him besides Nikki Haley. And it's so, not the first time he's done it. That's my he point does, exactly. He does it all the time. He does every, it all the time. Every opportunity. We, oh, you're a chump. And then we get caught up on. He said, "No, nah, I didn't mean it that way, dude. You can't uh, keep saying that." He is. He's, he's always going to be the leader. Yeah. And we're going to make him the leader of the country. No. Yeah. So yeah. no, I can't. I just can't. I right. can't be. I'm going to. I can't be. I'm going to go to Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm. No, you. I, I, look, hey, let me say this, y'all. Vi's <laughs> in the military, <laughs> so, so he. Got, I mean, I, I, I. I'm cutting him off before he gets emotional because he ain't gonna stop right because he's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate right, you, though, right. for real, for real, man. I you're mean, right. you know, for you, it's emotional. Yeah, it because is. Because you, right. you know, after 20 years serving in, in the Army, in the military, you know what it means. Yeah, but it like I tell be. my kids all the way, freedom ain't free. It ain't free. No. Listen, it ain't free. You know, I, I, I say this all the time, but I don't think that there should be a commander-in-chief who hasn't served. You know hmm. what I mean? Because it's like, yo, man, how are you going to send somebody and you don't know what the hell is going on? We wouldn't have had Obama. So what, that, what that's you mean, what I you don't mean? agree with that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, you know I, mean? I don't necessarily agree no, with that. I mean, don't get started, Mr. Hart. I mean, no, you, you, got, have, no, you got some military people, people who, who are too military. So we wouldn't have had Clinton. You wouldn't have Clinton. Yeah. You wouldn't have Bush Jr. So it would right. eliminate it. You would go down the yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. But what you got to leave? Yeah. What's your big takeaway? Um, I'm well, not sure Nixon served. No, nah, I don't think he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think Nixon served. Either. You're wiping out all the presidents. So, yeah. <laughs> you, know, but, um, you know, I want to just, um, my big takeaway of the week is a new segment that I want to call the Middle Finger of the Week Award. Um, oh, Lord. And this one, this one is given to people who are giving middle fingers to others. Because uh, Putin, this week, you know, and the 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 so-called um, assassination or mysterious death of uh, Alexei Navalny, you know, who's been you know in a in what been locked up since mm-hmm. twenty one, but you know his death in mysterious circumstances right after Tucker Carlson, the only one question that uh, that Tucker Carlson uh, gave to Putin when he was doing the interview that made Putin even kind of squirm a little bit it was eliminated a couple of days later it's like you don't know who you're playing with you know you these people are playing with Putin and Putin's like I don't really give a damn right now actually since you just asked about him watch this <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean yeah. and it's like yo would, would that have happened would he have gotten rid of him like that in this time frame if Tucker yeah. Carlson hadn't given him this softball interview yeah you know what I mean? It's like, yo, man, I'm telling you, these folks are not playing with us right now. You yeah. know, so and, true. and we gotta, we have to be, we have to be more cognizant of this. With this Palestine thing, we're really not looking good. Uh, Russia, we're really not looking good. I mean, you know, in the, in, with this, you know, in the Ukraine, uh, in terms of us siding with Ukraine, I'm like, yo, man, what, what? And Iran, and now Israel is bombing Yemen. Yeah. I mean, um, um, Lebanon. Come on, man. This. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, my my big. Yeah. Should I should I just defer my time? How do you how do you do it in Congress? Defer nah, my time back to Vi. Because clearly he was not finished. Even <laughs> he was not finished giving it to the orange man. <laughs> Appreciate. Hey, thank you for your service, Vi. On the real, man. Ooh, On the real. Because he was not finished giving it to Trump. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> we know where that vote's going. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> hey, y'all, let me say, man, uh, really, prayers, man, go out to the folks at, at you know, we're in the ATL. You, you know, I'm near the ATL, but I grew up in the ATL. Mays High School, man, the shooting yeah. in the parking lot, man, and, and, and multiple shootings really happening across yeah. these school systems. And And let me tell you, Michigan just had the situation go down where they are trying the parents. Yeah. One has already been given about 20 years. The father's coming up. He's going to be given probably the same or more. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to be doing. 
I'm going to be very clear. If, if you really want to put a stop to this, start trying the guardians, the parents. I know the Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, may not like that, but these kids somehow are getting support, which allows them to go out and get guns. The parents know about it. A lot of these kids, I mean, it, it goes even to middle school. So I'm going to say, you know, again, thought my prayers, I hate to say thoughts and prayers, man, but really and truly for the folks at Mays uh, and some of the mm-hmm. other high schools and, and, you know, middle schools where these guns are popping up, start trying, start bringing these parents, start holding these parents accountable. I, 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 I tell you, this Michigan case is going to change the game as far as these school shootings. Okay. Go back to you real quick, my, Harold Michael Harvey. Um, but, uh, but I do want to say thanks to, for coming on today. And um, one thing I want to mention before we close, uh, we're going to be doing a book giveaway uh, beginning in March. And um, I don't know. I don't want to, it, it's not a stump, the stump, the news crew stump the fellas. So fellas, we're going to give up, give it a name, but the name of the book uh, that you're actually uh, give, we're getting autograph from you. Go ahead and just a little bit about it. Just a, just a little summary, one line summary. Uh, let people know what, what we're going to be giving away in March. Uh, the title of the book is Watch Night, and it is a 160 year history of the church that I grew up in, Bethel Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, but, but practically every southern church um, in, in the southeast United States. Uh, got their origins on January the 1st, 1863, when mm-hmm. they stayed up and prayed and um, fasted all night, uh, wondering what was going to happen uh, when daybreak came, where, where the, the the clan, well, they didn't have a clan in that day, but would the um, Confederates come in and really try to hold them down and keep them in prison? Whether yeah. the slave master would rather see them free or rather to see them dead before you see them free. And so they came and they worshiped. And so I, I uh, follow that trek uh, from the church that I grew up in, uh, but it is a similar story. And you will, you will meet characters that influence my life and they will be so similar to people who influence your lives too, although we weren't in the same community. So, uh, and it just, it's very historical because we talk about the time period. Uh, I have in that story articles from the Macon Telegraph in 1860, Five, uh, how they talked about, um, um, well, basically, there was a pandemic or epidemic in in the black community right after uh, slavery, uh, which almost wiped out uh, the entire population of black people in Macon, Bibb County at that point in time. So, okay. so, so, although it's about this particular church, it's it's about all of our collective history. And mm-hmm. if you ever read any of my books. My books or 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 vignettes of our collective histories. I may be talking about something that is personal that has been personal in my life, but it all it but it all uh, contains our collective uh, history trying to get from slavery to freedom. Appreciate you though, and and we'll start giving those away in March. Uh, we'll have all the information online and on the website so uh, again go to castropolis.net love your thoughts as well uh choose the people poll you can leave us a voice message and i'll play back the best but uh, again beginning in in march watch night uh we'll start giving those away thank you harold michael harvey thank you so much for being on man let me let me give you your uh your, your applause thank you sir I like it. yes <laughs> free palestine yeah <laughs> <laughs> And should we we sh- should we defer some more time back to Vava? Are you all right? Check it out. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Hey, thank you so much. And uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back with Tanya B and the T. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, sir. Hey, man. Peace out. Right.
time for tea. It's tea time, y'all. Sipping the tea with Tanya B. Yes, children, it's time for tea. It's your girl, Tanya B. So get your cups and spoons ready and get ready. Now, first, we have to start at saying rest in peace to Edeline DeBarge. She is the matriarch of all them singing DeBarges and Switch members and Chico and Randy and James and all of them. She had been suffering from dementia for quite a while, so may she rest in peace. Also, want to send our condolences to Snoop Dogg. Now, you know, last month, his daughter had a stroke, and a couple of days ago, he just lost his brother. So prayers and love and light up to him, and especially to the people of Kansas City. All those people that got shot, we lost our radio colleague, DJ Lisa Lopez Govan also her cousin got shot it was supposed to be a glorious day and it ended up being anything but that and I'm just going to say this and keep it moving Tommy B juveniles should be charged as adults and again I ask where the parents okay hmm. now, uh, inquiring minds want to know does Travis Kelsey have an alcohol problem do you know Tommy B he was so drunk at that Super Bowl parade he could not even talk and it's not the first time this has happened is he bad for the brand that we know as Taylor Swift? Time will tell. We all know Usher set a Super Bowl record last week. More people watch Usher in the halftime than watch the man land on the moon. Usher got married. His tour is sold out. And uh, he's doing this uh, show about black love. I just got this to say, Usher, you've been married three times. I don't have many girlfriends, baby mamas, kids, all of that. And then he's talking about Chili from TLC broke his heart because he proposed to her and she said no. Could it be that he was uh, a serial cheater? Allegedly, we will have to see black love. All right, Usher. Everybody knows Beyonce shook the table with this country music. But she has once again made history as the first black female to top a music streaming country music chart. So, hey, as Jay-Z said, I tell the truth when I get nervous. <laughs> also, you know, I'm still wondering. We got to go vote, Tommy B. 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Who you got? Mariah, Mary J. Blige, Tribe Called Quest, Eric B. and Rakim, Cool in the Gang, or Sade. And got to give Cher 5 on it because she said, don't put me in there because if you do, I'm still not going to show up. More trouble for Russell Simmons. Mm-hmm. A former Def Jam music video producer alleges that he sexually harassed her to the point of depression, anxiety, and almost ruined her career. He has made zero apologies. He just said he did some thoughtless things back in the day. You think, Russell? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we know Tyler Perry still has this deal with Netflix and BET, but I just want to know, why are you bringing back Medea? Yes, there's turmoil in the world, Tyler, but can you make us laugh another way? Inquiring minds also want to know what happened to Kelly Rowland when she was supposed to co-host the Today Show a couple days ago. <laughs> Nothing. She gone. They tried to make her dressing room and say, yo, here you go, Kelly. It was a glorified broom closet. She deserves better. And to that, she said, uh, uh-uh. But I'm saying, mm-hmm. To Kelly starring in Tyler Perry's Mia Culpa. It comes out in a couple of weeks. Now, Tommy B. There's some people we just don't talk about. And I am I have started the We Tired of Y'all class of 2024. Who's leading? I'm going to tell you. Monique, Kanye and his titanium teeth, the Michael Jackson estate. Y'all better stop underestimating Mama Catherine Jackson. She from Gary. She going to buck up and mollywop everybody. We are also tired of Tyrese and his 48-hour breakups with the girlfriend for clickbait. And we are also tired of Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan. I'm just saying. But I got to say this, Tommy B. I know I said we don't talk about Kanye. To see him get kicked out of the Super Bowl for being too close to Taylor Swift and trying to get on camera, five on it. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Now, you know, Billy D. Williams is out here promoting this book. Um, he's got coming out. He's 86 years young. It's a grueling tour. Now, he said things like Marlon Brando hit on him. He also said that he would was a serial cheater. Do you know Usher? He also said he was involved in some threesomes and that uh, his last marriage was an open marriage. But what he also talked about was how Sparks did fly both times he made movies with Diana Ross. But you know, Barry Gordy was all up in the Kool-Aid, photobombing, all up in the video like, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, not with my baby mama, although he denied it at the time. I'm just saying... I'm just saying. All right, now, Law, I got one more thing. We got to lay somebody else on the altar. Bow Wow. Came out as a little Bow Wow, cute, talented, you know, co-signed by Snoop Dogg. Then he got into all this mess with all these baby mamas and all these kids. And he um, 
I hope he can get it back together. I really enjoyed him in that show, CBS Cyber, although it didn't last. But he was not hospitalized for exhaustion and dehydration. He was hooked on that lean, Tommy B. He was hooked on that lean. That's all I got. Don't forget, check us out each and every day on YouTube. Like, subscribe, share. And you can catch the bird wire right here on Castropolis.net on demand 24-7. Just go to Castropolis.net. Click on the icon, but thank you all for supporting. This is the G Podcast. I'm Tanya B. Thanks to Tanya B, Vi, Talib, author and political analyst Harold Michael Harvey. Thanks to the crew, Millennial Nick, Lady J, Regia, music by K-Dub, all those who help us make it happen every single week. And uh, starting the first episode in March, y'all, the Newsmaker Trivia begins. We need contestants. Go to castropolis.net to sign up. You'll win an autographed copy of the new book from author Harold Michael Harvey. But you got to get two out of three right, okay? So uh, the new book is Watch Night. Sign up at castropolis.net and get the details. Subscribe, turn on notifications for all our new episodes, y'all. And with that, episode 213 is in the can. Have a great week. Peace and power to the people. You've been listening to This is the G Podcast. And This is the G Podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Thanks for listening.